Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream on Twitch weekdays from 5pm Pacific Time in the United States, 10am in Australia and 1am in the UK. I hope you guys are well. We are working on an Art Deco building, interior and exterior, that uh, we're going to be creating in the Unreal Engine 4.15.1. We're working on the assets at the moment in 3D Studio Max. And as we uh, finish an asset, we're bringing it into uh, Unreal. So everything is nice and ready for when we have to start rebuilding the Art Deco building. Uh, yesterday we were working, uh, bringing in some railing sections that we're going to be using in the level. And we've created them in a modular fashion like this so that we can instance them to save on polygon counts and texture memory. Uh, so we've just created four different versions of the railing. This is the uh, stair railing that's in the back of the building. Uh, and I think we finished yesterday by doing the rug and the one of the curtains here. We just created a, a blueprint for the curtain so it's easy to move around because we have a separate uh, tie here for the curtain material that we're going to be instancing again so we can save, it, it, even though this uh, Mesh doesn't use a lot of polys. We're gonna we're instancing it anyway. Every little bit helps, I guess. Uh, and it's important if you're making a game that you try and conserve, you, you optimize the level as much as you can. So that's why it's good to um, reuse geometry and uh, cut down on the number of textures you're using. So we were bringing these into the engine yesterday, and as we work on them, we bring them in one by one. We make sure that we have everything uh, organized neatly so we have our props in our models folder and our materials in our materials folder. That way it just makes it easy for you to find anything if you've got to come back and make any changes once you start building the level itself. And of course textures are all in our textures folder. So let's, um, what should we start with? A bit of background on me for anyone new to the channel. Uh, I'm an Archbiz artist. I've worked in games development and uh, in cinema and film previously. I've been in 3D for more than 10 years. Um, if uh, you have any questions for me, please feel free to pop into chat and ask me. If you just want to pop in and say hello, that's always welcome. If you just want to watch, that's completely fine. Now this is, I'm recreating a building I created back in 2011 using UDK. I'm just going to play this video again. I know some of, <laughs> some of you guys that are regulars to my channel are getting really sick of seeing this video, but just for the benefit of anyone new, this is the building we're going to be recreating in um, Unreal Engine 4. This one was created in UDK, so Unreal Engine 3, back in 2011. I'll just let this video play through for a sec while I grab a quick drink. So we're going to be recreating this building in the new Unreal Engine. And as I go, I'm just updating some of the assets. I'm making some of them a little higher poly and I'm changing some of the textures on a few of them as well, just to make them look a bit more interesting. Update them for the uh, for 2017. Graphics cards have gotten a lot more powerful. Um, computers are a lot more powerful, so we can afford to uh, just make some improvements to some of the assets or props that we're using in the level here. And again, this was back in 2011. I'm, I'm recreating it now in the new engine for Unreal. I'm interested to see the changes that, that Epic have made in the lighting in the engine. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be, I'm going to be recreating this building as you see it now, but uh, some bits and pieces here and there, I'm probably going to uh, update a little bit or, or swap, or just change around just to make it a bit more interesting. We were working on these railing sections yesterday that you see up here. Anyway, let's stop it there and um, jump back into um, Max, I think. So this is the building we're going to be bringing into Unreal. I want to make some changes on the original building here. I'll just um, make a few bits and pieces a bit higher polygon, add a bit more detail to the actual building. Change out the roof tiles completely because I really hate that texture. 
And what I've done here is I've lay, lined up all of the assets for the interior in a row. And that way I can be sure I don't forget something that I need to rebuild the building. The ones in the foreground here are ones we still have to do. The ones in the background are ones we've already done. So as I do an asset, I just move it to the background. A lot of these are floor pieces, which I want to take into Mari by the foundry to do some 3D painting on. Some of the textures on these I really don't like. Um, we were working on these uh, railing sections yesterday. I just want to have a quick look at this section here, this railing that we created. Because I think I forgot to put the detailing in the um, side wood panelling. Yeah, it looks like I did. So we may have to do that now, I think. Uh, it shouldn't be too difficult for us to quickly swap out the um, this mesh for the one we've already imported. So let me start by finding uh, the detailing I want to copy over. I think this one we should be able to take. The detailing I'm talking about is this wood uh, border here around the outside. All I've done is I've actually made some 3D geometry for it. Again, it doesn't look like I've got it on that one. Why is that? I know we have on this one, you can see the actual wood is three uh, actual mesh, not a fake flat texture like this one here. So let's fix this one up first. I've forgotten to actually add that wood um, border. Let's take these two. Actually, this one might be an old one, I think. That's probably why it doesn't have it. Let's jump into one real quickly. I can check my, t my um, props much more quickly and easily actually in Unreal. Let's look at this one first. Uh, no, this one has the three-dimensional border, so that one's good. I know that this one does because we um, started with this one and that one's good. Okay, let's have a look at some of these. No, that one looks okay as well. And this one. No, this one's all right as well. And this one. No, again, this one's okay. We have our three-dimensional border here going on. So I think it's probably only the stairwell here that we forgot to add it on. And yeah, it's, it's to see there's no three-dimensional border here, it's just a flat texture. I want to actually add that um, wooden border section. It'll just help to uh, throw the light a little bit more, to make a, a more interesting um, mesh with lighting if it's just a little bit higher poly through here. So let's jump back into Max. So what I want to do, I think, is take the border from one of these pieces. Um, let's take it from, let's take it from this piece here, I think. So I'm going to go into my Modified tab into Sub-Object Mode and I'm going to select the uh, border. I'm going to do a detach, if I can find the button. But I'm going to detach as a clone because I don't want to remove it from the original mesh. I'm just going to call it new B for border. Now comes the fun part, oh, there we go. Max selected it for me quite easily. Sometimes you can have problems sometimes in Max doing a sub-object selection like that when they're both uh, on top of each other. Let's just zoom out here in the top viewport and just so I can get myself um, organized. I'm going to start just by um, affecting the pivot, going into my hierarchy tab and centering the uh, pivot to the object. Let's move that out. And let's select the um, 
the actual stairwell and go into isolation mode so we don't have uh, all the other meshes around to confuse us. Okay. Now we want to rotate this, um, making sure angle snap is turned on. 90 degrees. Okay. Let's see if we can't get it positioned. Got to make sure I'm looking at the correct, correct side here because um, one part of this stairwell is the outside here, which faces out. There's a wall behind it. And the uh, other side is actually there's a step, a stairs that run along it. And I, I can tell that because the texture I've changed to make it look a little different. That way I know that that's the inside where the stairs butt up against. You'll never see most of this texture because the stairs actually go right up underneath of that runner. So I know this is the side I want to work on, but I know here in my um, viewport, I'm looking at the wrong side. So instead of looking at the back, I need to look at the front. Now I know I'm looking at the right part of the model. Let's rotate this um, piece. Now I'm going to turn angle snap off here so I can get the rotation correct. Let's move it up. Now we have to, the, um, the panelling in this is a little different from the, um, the normal stair railing pieces. So we're going to have to make some adjustments to our mesh here. But I have to make sure I line it up correctly first. We might start with this piece in the middle and work our way out. So I think I'll start by doing a uniform scale. Again, I'm just moving the mesh out of alignment here so I can judge my width here. While I'm doing this scale, I'm not concerned with the length, I'm more concerned with the width. That should be good. Now we have to um, line up our border sections, so let's see here. Let's go into vertex mode. I'm going into local mode for my axes here so I can follow the actual um, flow of the model. Parent mode. I'm just going to pull that back a bit. Okay, let's work on this next section here. I'm going to pull that up. I'm going to have to make this one a bit smaller in through the center. Better match that one up there. All right, let's grab uh, all of these pieces here and pull them back. Again, I know I've harped on this before, but if you're a Max user, make sure you have ignore back facing unticked if you're doing this sort of vertex movement. Otherwise, you're not going to grab the ones in the background and you'll end up skewing a mesh. Let's move those ones in a bit. Grab the ones on the end. Pull them up. And then make this uh, edge here a little bit smaller this part here a little smaller to better match that one up there. So I'll pull that back. Okay. Let's go into parent again. Local when we're in 
a full object mode um, parent when we're in sub object or vertex mode. Uh, I'm going to sh shift drag a copy down. Make sure it's a copy, not an instance. If you make it an instance, any changes you make on this mesh are going to be ch uh, will change the uh, original mesh as well. Uh, the alignment here is not too bad, so that should be fine. But we have this one at the top, which is a little shorter. So again, we're going to shift drag a copy. And make some adjustments here to better match the one at the top. Uh, Alright, let's start with uh, this one here. This one on the end is probably okay. We'll just move this one up a little bit in the middle. And this one here on the end is okay, but you can see that we don't actually have um, three sections like here. We've only got two. So what we're probably going to have to do is we're going to have to cut our mesh. So I'm going to go to quick slice mode and I'm going to cut my mesh through here. Mm, actually, I'm just going to bring it back a little bit more. So that should allow us to select the polys on the end. And I'm going to delete them. I'll jump back into our verts here and I'm just going to move my um, my verts in the end here down in line. So I'm going to hold the Alt key to deselect these ones. I'm going to pull them in a bit. Again, the, the end of this um, railing section you won't really see because it's butting up against another piece of railing that runs uh, this way. All right, so we should have all of our pieces sized correctly. Let's um, move them up now. Let's make sure that they're actually lined up here. You can see it's floating out into space. We're going to pull it in. And I always like to go into orthographic to do this, particularly when you have um, an overhang like we have here with this um, runner section. You won't really be able to see it properly in the top viewport. You would if you go into wireframe, but I still always prefer the feedback I get in the uh, orthographic viewport. I'm just going to swing around here so I can see what it looks like as I pull it in. And we want it about there, I think. I have to make sure I'm looking at the right uh, side as well. That should be okay, I think. Yep, we've got our more three-dimensional looking um, side sections now. All right, so all we should really have to do now is select our original mesh and uh, do an attach on these new pieces. Now I always like to do a reset on the X form before I re-import it into um, Unreal, just to be on the safe side. So we'll go into our Modify tab in Max, um, Reset X form, and throw one of those down, and then we're going to collapse the stack. Okay, called Stairs Back. Let's um, export this model. find our folder because we put our objects in um, their own folder. It makes it easier then for us to go back and make any changes that we want to make. Let's 
Stairs back is the one we want. Let's jump back into Unreal and re-import that um, mesh we exported. Now you see it's brought in our new model but it hasn't um, textured that uh, stair piece up. So let's fix that up now. So we need, we know we need to find the uh, texture that goes to that and that's this one up here. So if I go into my building materials and drag our texture in, our material that we've already created, then we have our um, textured up model again. Make sure you save your changes. thinking they may be able to come out a little bit more, I think. So let's make sure we select our borders again. And I think I'm just going to pull them out just a little bit. I'm just going to go into um, it doesn't really matter. We'll stay in parent, I guess. out so I can just see a bit more three-dimensionality through there. And I've done that without detaching the object, just going into sub-object mode. As soon as I deselect that, it's still all part of the same mesh. Okay, let's just export that one more time. Stairs back is the one we want. Yes, we want to overwrite. Again, uh, I've just created a preset here in Max called Painted to UE4 with uh, Turbo Smooth, Triangulate and Preserve Edge Orientation turned on. I generally don't use Turbo Smooth, but it doesn't hurt to have it tick just in case. Back into Unreal again and uh, let's re-import that asset one more time. Jump back into the actual model and check that. And now you see we've got a lot more three-dimensionality. So it just looks more interesting as an asset. And the lighting will uh, be thrown across the surface and make the model look a lot more detailed and more interesting. And we haven't increased the polygon count substantially by doing that really. Each of these planes is only two tri triangles, so. Let's just make a save of all of our changes. And jump back into Max. Let's go out of our isolation mode. Okay, now we're finished with that banister. And again, you'll see in the original banister here, let's, again, for anyone that wasn't watching yesterday, you see our banister here in the um, viewport has these iron sections and they are just um, imported on their own, like this one here, and then duplicated inside the engine multiple times to save on poly counts because it's only going to be read into game memory once just one of those iron pieces will be read into memory and then it's just going to be referenced for every um, instance duplicated piece so that saves on our poly count as well even though the um, asset looks quite detailed the computer is really only reading that one iron piece into memory and then just um, instancing it all the way down All right, and again, we've created a blueprint here to make it easy for us to place that in our level when we need to. All right, let's jump back into Max. And then let's have a look at what we can work on now. Uh, we still do have to do this large chandelier. Let's bring in maybe the, um, maybe the shear. This is a shear curtain that sits behind the main curtain here. So you have the curtain at the foreground and then you have two shears that sit behind either curtain on either side. 
the cover of the window. So we're just going to call it shear. We're not going to be using a normal map or anything on this. This is meant to be a very light fabric. Let's uh, export selected. Again, we'll make a new folder. So we keep it every everything nice and organized. We're just going to call it shear. And we're going to export it as shear. .fbx. Okay, let's jump back into Unreal. Um, just before I do that, I want to check what material that shear is using. I'll wait for Max to open up my material editor. Okay, so it's using this one here. Again, it's a, a target file and I prefer to work, I'm going to be working with PNG files in um, Unreal. I always work in Targa generally because it's lossless and it's a, a, a universal format and if you're working for a design studio, a lot of them prefer you work with Targa. Um, if you're uh, giving your work to other people to, in the studio or you're swapping your work between studios, Targa or TIFF is generally the preferred format. Um, but Unreal works quite well with PNG files and uh, will work probably. I'm, I've been working with PNG, it's just a little easier. So I'm just going to jump into the folder that has all of my textures for that model. New for projects, models, Art Deco building, Deco model. Just checking our. Um, our text is here. Shear.tga is the one that we want to convert. So I'm going to open up Photoshop really quickly. And I think we'll load up that shear texture and do a conversion to a PGA, uh, PNG. Okay, let's save as. We'll save it in the same folder that the uh, original texture is in. I'll leave Photoshop open just in case we need to come back into it. Let's import that Shear tech, uh, model we just exported. That all looks good. We didn't do a reset on the X form. We may, may run into a problem, but we'll see. No smoothing groups. We don't have smoothing groups. That's not a problem. Let's find the material that was automatically created for that shear, yeah. And it, it, it will have brought in the uh, target texture and I just want to swap that out for a um, for the PNG. So I'm just going to import the PNG version. Which is this one here. Yes, I want to overwrite the target file. Let's jump back into our material header. Uh, that's the PNG, so we want to make sure it's using that texture. Let's save it. Now, I do want to add um, some opacity to this. I'm just looking through my um, my object list. I'm going to make sure I'm in my material. Uh, 
we'll go mask. We could use the shear as a mask, as a uh, opacity mask. We'll try that first. So we'll try using the actual shear material as our um, opacity mask. That doesn't always work well, so we'll see what, it, what, what result it gives us. Got to wait for um, the compiler to recompile. We'll pull in the mesh we just imported after we save our uh, shader. Just looking for the mesh now. Where did it put our mesh? Am I going blind? I can't see it. Texture, Texture. Let's delete this texture, the target one. We don't want that. I can't see our mesh though. Let's just rename our um, material here. It may be getting confused because we have a material called Shear, a texture called Shear, and we want to import a model called Shear as well. So we're just going to call this one color for the color texture. It's going to import that um, that asset again. Okay. I'll be very annoyed if it swapped that texture out. No good. Now, you see what happens if you try and sometimes use the, the texture as your opacity map? Uh, again, the same thing with the curtain. I've removed the polygons from the back because you never see the back and it's just doubling your polys for no reason. That's why it disappears when we turn around because we only ever see it from the front. But you see the problem we're having here with our mask texture? It's just weird. <laughs> So let's jump back into our material here for the shear. And let's throw down a constant. I'm going to plug the constant into the opacity mask. I'm just waiting for my shader to update here. I'm going to increase the value of my constant. Are you doing here? Just took a minute for it to update. I'm just going to save that. So we're just saving the shader. Let's jump back into our um, our object here, our mesh. You see that. Using a constant has brought back our material. What I'm going to do actually is um, I'm going to throw that object into the level. Okay, now I think we may be looking at it from the back. Let's do a rotation. There we go. Now that's fine, except this is a sheer material and it shouldn't be blocking out all the light from the background. So let's um, go back into our materials here, our original materials. And I'm just looking for one we've created when we created the, um, the doors here in the background. These doors have uh, glass panelling. 
and you can see part, partly through the glass here. So let's, let's look at the texture we use for that. If I can find it. I think it's this one here. No, it's not this one. It's the one beside it. Uh, the glass material. Now, this uses a constant in opacity with a translucent. That may be a better way for us to go. So instead of trying to use a mask, whereas shear, let's jump back into the uh, material here. Let's use a um, translucent material and plug the, the constant into opacity. Again, I'm just giving the um, editor a minute here to catch up and saving our new material. Now you can see we can partially see through our shear and you decide now whether how much opacity we want to actually give to the shear itself. Do we want to make it more or less opaque? Um, it's not too bad as it is actually. We could probably maybe knock it back a little bit. And we just do that by going into the constant value and um, instead of making it less opaque, make it more so, pulling, just pull up, pull up a little bit on it. it. It's really fine control here, so you don't want to be go too high too quickly. We're just, I've taken it from like 0.88 to 0.92. We'll look at the difference that that's made. Hey, Clen Clentrick is it? Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I'm using Unreal Engine 4.15.1 here. We're creating a, an Art Deco building interior and exterior. And we're just working on some of the props for it at the moment. It was a building I made back in uh, 2011 using UDK. <laughs> Again, let's just quickly run through the video. I'll just start it off around the middle. So we're, re we're remaking this building interior and exterior in the new version of the uh, Unreal Engine. So I'm using 3D Studio Max to make my models. I'm updating my models from back when I made it six years ago um, in Max. And I'm using Unreal Engine 4 to actually make the uh, level again, the building again. So that's actually what we're working on. So we're working on this Art Deco building. Right? This Art Deco building. And I'm, I'm using Unreal Engine 4 here. And at the moment we're working on a shader to work out how opaque we want to make our sheer texture for behind the curtains. And you see by me taking it from 0.88 to 0.92 in the constant, it's just made it look a little bit less uh, see-through. So I think that's a better approximation of what a sheer would be like uh, behind a curtain. It's meant to block some of the light, but not all of the light. So it's not going to be a thick fabric like the curtain material we see here but it's not going to be completely transparent either. It's just meant to block a little of the light. Oh, let's just move this up um, near our curtain, I think. It looks like the size may be a little off on this too. I'm going to jump into my top viewport so I can get this lined up correctly. And it, our rotation's a little off, so let me just rotate it back. And let's move it up here behind the curtain. So we can work on our scaling, because our scaling is a little bit old. Back into orthographic. All right. Now our shear is uh, way, way too small for our curtain here. 
Again, I have a feeling that's because I didn't do a reset on the export before I did the export from Max. Doing a reset would have fixed that, but we can fix it easily in um, Unreal just by using the scale tool and doing a uniform scale. 